Hey everyone, and welcome to Alpha 3 of Planet Coaster. And look, we have a new start menu. This is one of the new things that they have here since they have integrated into the Steam. And we have gained the Steam Workshop. In doing so, there's some pretty cool stuff that you can do. You can share your creations now. You can share your parks now. And uh, you can create your own little avatar. And I went ahead and made mine. There's not many options in here, so I can't really make one look like me. Uh, as, you know, no one really looks like a long-haired hippie bastard out of any of the choices. But that's okay. Uh, went ahead just with this guy. Standard guy with some glasses. Because I do have glasses, so that's about all I can think of there. And... The start menu has changed. We're going to play here. There's a couple, obviously, different things. Career mode's coming soon. That's going to give us some interesting scenarios, I'm sure. Uh, challenge mode is basically like sandbox mode where you build whatever you like, but you are you have a money and you have to worry about income. Sandbox is basically what we've been doing uh, from day one. You can still manage your park, but you're not going to uh, have to worry about making money in that sense. The My Parks tab, that is for... Oh, this is where all your saves are now located. And it's from even their downloaded save from the workshop. Uh, Frontiers Parks are in here now. This used to be on the planet. So uh, they moved those into this little subfolder. And if we go back here, uh, tutorials are coming soon. And what's new is coming soon, which I guess is some type of news feed. Maybe potentially info on potential DLC after the game is released. I don't know what they're going to use that for. Um, I don't think they talked about it specifically. But on the front, they have some celebrity kind of creators here for the Steam Workshop. And you can just click them and quickly browse uh, basically their little pieces to use in your parks and download them from the Steam Workshop rather quickly through here. Um, James Taylor, of course, I believe this should be Flabaliki, but I don't know. They might be trying to just use that name. Because I don't think he finished his park. Okay. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and resume and see what it does to our Pokemon park. Because I feel like I want to take this first chance to just show you what might be possible in the new Alpha and Alpha 3 here. I don't know how this is going to do. But I have some hopes. The loading screen definitely feels like it's going to take a little bit longer. But that gives me some time to talk about what we're going to be doing here in the new season in Alpha 3. Uh, I want to make a new park, obviously. The Pokemon park is too big and detailed, and it's not laid out correctly for how Alpha 3 plays. And we want to make something that's going to work using the new mechanics. And also, a new theme is always kind of a good, good excuse to get something fresh. So the next thing that we are going to be doing is I want to make a renaissance fair. Um, I know that's not really a theme park per se. I mean, I can add theme park elements to it, like, you know, the occasional odd coaster or two. But, you know, I want to have like a jousting arena. I want to have market squares, kind of these little shops lining these pathways. Because the pathways we have in Planet Coaster kind of lend itself to just these winding straight shots over from large plazas. And if you guys have ever been to, like, a, a Renaissance Festival, you know that it, it's very open, yes. But the path you follow is basically a, just a straight, winding path all the way around in a big circle. I hope that's going to lend itself rather well. So we're going to load in here. And the first thing you notice is, one, it's nighttime, which is not really great for you guys' viewing pleasure. Also, my FPS is... Uh bad just because of how many objects we have in the in the park so let's fast forward time just so it becomes day we have a lot of people like holy cow um <laughs> this is a little crazy to think about last time the park had about a thousand two hundred we are now sitting at four thousand two hundred sixty six total uh patrons in our park and they're just making a mess i mean look at this they're just leaving trash pretty much everywhere in our park and just destroying it slowly. There's just herds and herds of people 
clogging up our pathways and uh, I'm gonna definitely have to work on it though I do like you know how many people there are it's definitely um, I mean they're kind of walking in place a little bit it's, it, it just needs a little bit of work on my end to make the paths uh, a little bit more efficient as to where they want to go so alpha 3 obviously we have water now water is just a decoration at this time I don't know if they plan on ever adding physics to it but the water is in the terrain tab here um, I'm gonna go try and go to a spot where we get some more FPS also there's no waterfalls um, besides just using like the jets yeah, the VFX effects that we have been using for the whole of Alpha 2, there's no way to create a good looking waterfall. So that's kind of a shame. Um, just because the VFX kind of really hit your performance if you use it too much. And considering we would have two large waterfalls here, I don't really want to do that right now. Uh, but there are a few water types. And uh, from dirty water to standing water, rough water, and calm water so this is the calm water you can see it's slightly blue fairly transparent you can see it relatively deep there um, but over here it's a little bit more shallow you can see the texture coming through and, and some of the reflection it looks really nice the lighting engine was upgraded it seems and everything's popping out a little bit more but I also feel like there might be a little too much bloom um, this is with bloom off in the settings as well so everything's just really really bright uh, I don't know how much I like that or not uh, in the long run it might be okay I might just have to get used to it because it kind of changes the colors of everything in the game but let's go ahead and show you how to use this water tool so if you right click on it it's gonna remove the water that's fairly normal with planet coaster right clicking removes things uh, you can see it removed the whole thing because what you do is you set a water height and the water height you can see it won't let us set us up up this high because it might cover too much area it might cover pathways or something so it's going to limit us to this height here uh, this is what the dirty water looks like this is a little bit more brown um pretty much the same thing as the calm water just a dark oh man it kind of looks like the ohio river uh, that's something i want the standing water is a little bit more blue green a little bit swampy um, but also it, it's definitely a nicer kind of color this would be nice for like ponds I think or non flowing water hence why the term standing water makes sense here so that's gonna be really cool to mess around with in the long term and then the final option here is the rough water which you can see it does flow a little bit quicker and uh, reflects objects in a little bit more of a rough way. I really like the reflections, like seeing parts of your coaster and stuff. So we'll just leave it as the rough water. And having the waterway actually looks really nice. The dock over here is actually functional, which is pretty cool. Um, we got uh, some cool reflections killing my FPS by going close to all those people because they're pretty much stuck going back and forth. Uh, some other cool things they added. The park management tab is new. Uh, this is where you can hire your staff. You can actually place them around the park where you want them. We can go ahead and place the Pirate King here and he will go around, maintain his staff happiness and entertain these guests. And the guests also react to the entertainers a little bit better than before. Um, I believe earlier I set down the T-Rex. I have no clue where he ran off to. Wow, the plaza is a little busy in here. Kind of wish we had proper tables still. Uh, but, you know, we have some trash bins. Not everyone's using them, apparently. Kind of a problem. I also have some janitors. I have no clue where they are. They're probably just lost in the crowd. Here's the T-Rex. There's Gulpy. And you can see people actually stop and stand around your mascots now and uh, be entertained, point, laugh, cheer, and then when he's moving around, um, they kind of go about their way. That's a pretty nice feature. Let's go ahead and drop down the janitor just so you guys get to see what he looks like up close. This is the janitor here. We'll just plop him down. 
and he just wanders around. He empties out the trash bins, also brushes up the debris on the ground itself. So, yet to manage their staff happiness, which I don't quite know how to do just yet. I would assume maybe having enough staff to where they're not overworked. Um, you can also manage their salary here, you know. Right now, we're not playing in any special game mode, so I mean, I can pay these guys like $100 and be fine. Training, um, after a certain amount of time, it looks like in June 18th, we'll be able to train him from level 1 to 2, which makes him do his job just better and more efficiently. Same with the little mascots here. Uh, they get to run around and training on June 16th. I don't know if that increases the longer they've been out. I mean, decreases in terms of date. But I don't know if they gain XP depending on how many guests they're entertaining. Don't really know enough quite about that system just yet. What else is in this park management tab? Uh, here is the princess. She is a new entertainer that is part of the fantasy themed set that is out in part of Alpha 3. That's definitely the main bulk of that was added here. As I kill my FPS again, I need to stop doing that. Uh, what else in here's the staff list from all of our vendors and if you click on them uh, the camera will zoom over to their location I don't know if you can rename these guys or not doesn't look like it he's content with their paycheck they're, they absolutely love their jobs so you know you get some information and feedback but the deep Park finance tools and guest tabs and park operation tabs aren't quite there yet. Uh, I'm sure that's going to happen over time and definitely will be there for the final release. It's getting nighttime again, so we're just going to fast forward time as we go through. Then this this is quite the bottleneck in this spot. You can see we have a lot of paths kind of converging here, creating a major, major issue. Um, some other cool things that they added. Of course, the blueprint tab. This is new. You can see all the blueprints that you have here. I think these are the ones that you save. So that's, this is where your blueprints go. Now, they also, I believe, get uh, shown up in the tabs based on where they are. Like, if it's a building blueprint, they'll show up in the building tab as well. But the coaster blueprints show up. Um, and the coaster tab. So there are some ride blueprints for the people who maybe want to spend more time worrying about the overall uh, management side and don't have to worry about building or anything. And so they can use these uh, tools to plop down coasters, such as this one here. Um, they do look really nice and they function really well. I don't want any more people in my park, so I'm going <laughs> to remove that real quick. Let's see. There's a bunch of new flat rides. I don't really remember them all. I mean, the cube is new. There's teacups. There's uh, new uh, spinning-like things that are like hammers. Uh, there are... Where is it? This one's cool. This is like a forge of some kind that spins around and has lava-y kind of molten metal down beneath you large chains, gears. That would look really cool in like a dwarven uh, theme. Okay, so other than that and some new coasters, which I don't really want to cover the rides too much just because to me, the biggest thing is more parts to build with as I kill my FPS for a, I don't know, I think that's like the 50th time that I've ruined my FPS. Another cool new feature of Alpha 3 is this. So if we click on our coasters, we get to actually see some information on here how long the queue is to uh wait and before you get on it's about seven minutes right now our queue is too short for this ride how many guests we get a month how much it earns a month lifetime guests and the scenery quality around the coaster rating uh ri ride type how many people want to go on the coaster if there's any negatives to that and also there's the testing phase which Actually, if you ride it around, you can watch the coaster go around, and these bars do adjust in real time, depending on where the coaster is. So you, you will be able to fine-tune your coaster 
and really find these areas. So right here, during that first turn, the nausea really went up on that. And that might be something I might want to watch out for in the long run. So that's a really nice feature. I really like it's a very easy and understandable graph to uh, show you how your coaster is doing. Also, the results tab here tells you how long your coaster lasts, uh, how long it is in terms of meter, the max speed, the average speed, the biggest drop, uh, how much G is put on the passengers. This actually goes over about the 5G limit, which is fine. Um, I'm not really the best coaster designer in the world, so I don't really worry about min-maxing my coasters here. Uh, how many inversions there are, how many air times, total air time durations, you know, really cool stuff like that. Finances, monthly income things, ticket prices, uh, your colors. This is pretty much was there before, though you can color individual little track sections now. Uh, capacity. I don't know if you can change anything here. Uh, wait for, these are like load times. And uh, priority passes, which is like basically like a short queue. It's a way to skip the queue if they pay extra money. So there's a lot more, I guess, managing and a little bit more depth to everything in the new alpha. Uh, let's go over and maybe see if there's anything that I don't know about. There's some pre-built food shops now, which is pretty handy, especially for, again, those people that don't want to build the structures. So here's a pre-built little chief beef shop. Um, you know, little pre-built structures, which I guess sometimes take a little bit to load in all their assets. But you can see they're definitely going for that fairy tale theme. Uh, this looks like it belongs here, maybe in a little bit like uh, Beauty and the Beast kind of element. And it, it's, it's, very, it's very nice to have blueprints and being able to save and share your uh, things for the future. Uh, let's go to buildings real quick. And custom. They added all these little side tabs here just so you can sort your items. There's even a, a search bar so you can search uh, the, for the specific piece that you're looking for if you know the name of it. You can uh, view small thumbnails or larger thumbnails if you want to kind of increase your efficiency or potentially see what you're doing a little bit better. There's a whole lot more pieces, guys. Like this, the, the amount of stuff that we can now build is a little, little crazy to think about. I mean, there's even stained glass, which is pretty cool for sure. And some pieces, you can change the color. So like this kind of bluish purple roof here. That I don't know how well you guys can see. I'm waiting for daytime. But like we can change the main uh, roof tiles to say of a, of a light orange here. And then the trim to like a green or something. Um, being able to change colors of things... It, again, it's only certain pieces. I don't know if they want to eventually support all pieces with this. But the fact that they support any of it, I think, is going to increase kind of what we can do and really just overall be a great addition to the game. I'm trying to find another piece that I might be able to color. Let's just go to the wall tab. There's some really nice new walls, like some really nice, uh, almost like... Where is it? Uh, it is. They're calling them castle walls, but I think they're more... I mean, the standard term would just be, like, uh, stone. I mean, you know, granite or something. But they have really good colors. Even this, like, this is kind of like a, a smooth plaster-like piece that would be for a kind of a desert thing. But you can change the color of it and really make it look uh, pretty funky and nice. So that is something to really look forward to, for sure. Man, the FPS is a little, a little much, but I really think that's, that's just due to the crowd and just this intersection right here. That's just, they don't know what to do. 
at all with that. Uh, there's plenty of other scenery items as well. I'm not going to try and cover everything because there's really just that much. Um, you know, from like, this is like a millstone, which is cool. This is like a corner piece to a millstone. Um, you can, I mean, extend it for some reason. I don't know if mill presses were were modular quite like this if you want like a long track piece you could almost use that and inset it into the ground and make uh, something that looks like a car ride you know something on rails that would be pretty cool something that might also look like a monorail new trees guys i mean like this is gonna be really really awesome from like little wagons and just the little tiny detail pieces that you guys uh really need to sell like the believability of an environment there's new animatronics um like little little pirate guys you know uh, he's really angry at something um that guy with another flintlock there there's some yeah some really tall trees uh some desert trees as well there's a new color palette for like desert like areas um some covered kind of barn like elements with some thatched roofing which looks great even some pottery like i i i it's gonna take me a little while to get used to all of these features but in reality i think it's gonna be pretty damn cool like if we go to the blueprint here of some of these default buildings we'll just drop down one of the fairy tale shops here and just take a look at it and you can see they're using a lot of different colors from the main roof piece there um i don't know if that wooden frame yeah so these we have wooden frame elements which are great for doing kind of these plaster and wood structures the new roof lines the new kind of uh domer windows and just just everything is it's just going to be pretty great. I don't know if that's a new window or if they used a door. That's a village window, grand wooden. Okay. Flower planters, hanging flowers, uh, anything. How's the inside look? I think the best feature about it is the, is the fact that the interior is going to be a little bit more clean with these new pieces. Um, just because you can change the color, we don't have to try and... I guess fudge it as well as much so that's gonna help out a lot so that's about 22 minutes of an overview here um, tomorrow what I'm gonna do and hopefully you guys will like is upload the first part of building the new park that's a nice little clock tower yeah no this is this is gonna be so much fun guys building building something new so, if you guys enjoyed the first look at Alpha 3, look forward for more. It's more is on the way. Uh, hopefully, you guys can stick around as we build another park. Uh, hopefully, not quite as laggy as this. This is about 12 FPS for you guys right now, which is just not good uh, for viewing pleasure. But, um, if you guys have any suggestions, of course, leave them down below. If you have any questions about Alpha 3, you can let me know as well and go ahead leave a like if you want to see more go ahead and subscribe if you're new check out my other videos and how we built the park behind me i'm going to go ahead and upload the pokemon park to the steam workshop just so people can download it easier and until then i'll see you guys next time in some uh, planet coaster Whoa.